So what I'm going to present to you in this video is a short introduction to what kind of information we can find about genomes with Ensemble. And after that, I'm going to go through some specific demos. I'm going to look at sequence variation for a gene, structural variation like copy number variation for a region, how to convert older coordinates, for example, if you have data on an older genome assembly or an older genome sequence, how to update that. Also, how to blast a sequence if maybe you're not sure which gene it is. So what information about a gene can I find, first of all? So the genome browser is trying to be an integration point. So there are over 100 databases of biological information out there. And what we're trying to do is provide you a quick and easy way to go to a specific region or a specific gene and find out more information for example, you can view splice variants, the proteins, the non-coding RNAs in a region. You can look at sequence variation, so short sequence variation like SNPs or indels, insertion deletions, or maybe structural variation like copy number variation. You might want to look at the whole genome alignments or a protein tree. Maybe you're interested in gene regulation and we have some information that can point to those sequences. And finally, you might have your own data that you want to view compared with the rest of this information. So there are three major genome browsers in the world for multi-species browsing. The Ensemble Genome Browser, NCBI Map Viewer, and the UCSC Genome Browser. We know that Ensemble is used worldwide, so our top users, our top 10 users, include the UK, the US, Canada, China, Japan, and more of the countries in Europe. And looking at our gene set and where that's from, all of our transcripts go back to a protein or a cDNA or mRNA sequence. And most of these are found in Uniprot knowledge base or NCBI reference sequence set. So just mentioning what manual curation is, that's really looking at each protein in this case, for example, in SwissProt, on a case-by-case -case basis. And experts really look at that protein, look back at the literature, and decide if that protein looks like a real sequence or not, a really expressed protein or not. So if it is manually curated, then it's in the Swiss Prot set. Tremble is just all the sequences in Emble Bank that have been translated. So there you will get some hypothetical proteins which have yet to be reviewed. CCDS is the consensus coding sequence set, and it's a set of sequences that have been agreed upon between EBI, Wellcome Trust Sanger Institute, NCBI, and UCSC. And the idea is, if you see a CCDS ID for a transcript, you can feel pretty sure about that coding sequence. So you can see we've got an increasing number now. We've got 26,000 or more uh, human coding sequences in the set, and also over 22,000 in mouse. So in Ensemble, you'll also see Vega Havana annotation. So what is this? Well, this is actually going back to manual curation, where there's a team looking at each gene on a case-by-case -case basis, so deciding what the splice variants are for each of those genes. This is the Vega Havana group. So Havana is a group at the Sanger that does this. And we can import their transcripts and add them and compare them to our automatic annotation pipeline, which is gene building all at once, which is just taking those sequences from Unipro, from NCBI, RefSeq, and aligning them to the genome. So if you really want to know the highest quality transcripts in Ensemble, you can look for the CCDS. So that's going to be the highest quality coding sequence. And also you can look for the Ensemble Havana merged transcripts these are our golden transcripts. So these are for human, mouse, and zebrafish. And if you do see a golden transcript, that means that both the ensemble annotation pipeline and Havana manual curation agree. So all these transcripts will have an ensemble transcript identifier. That's ENST. Um, also, ENSG is the ensemble gene identifier. ENSP is a protein identifier. And ENSE is the exon. ID. And these are stable, which means that in the future, even though there are updates, you're going to see the same gene ID. 
So this is for human. If you're working with species other than human, you actually have a little code that's added that represents the species name. So for example, for C squirt, C savigny, you've got ENS C sav G for gene and the unique 11 digit identifier. For Daniel Rerio, which is zebrafish, you have ENS DAR gene. So that's enough about the gene set. What other information do we have? Well, we have comparative analysis. At the time of this video, we're on release or version 64 of Ensemble, and there are 57 species. And in fact, all the homologs are determined using these 57 species. And you can also see whole genome alignments, variation and, and also sequences that may be involved in gene regulation are available. Biomart is a tool that allows you to export data quite quickly. We also have a lot of external data in the browser that we're using DAS, which is a shared format um, or a platform to view this external data. If you do know Perl, you can access the database programmatically and everything we have is open source, meaning you can access it freely. So let's delve a little bit deeper into sequence variation. So I just wanted to let you know what the sources of our sequence variation, our phenotype and disease associations, our population frequencies are in Ensemble, and just mention what the VEP tool does. So the goal is to understand the sources and types of vari variation information in Ensemble. So the types we have are short uh, sequence variations like SNPs, single nucleotide polymorphisms, small insertions and deletions, short tandem repeats, and also larger structural variations like copy number variation. So most of our small or short sequence variants are from dbSNP, and what we import are alleles, flanking sequence, population frequencies, for example, and uh, what's calculated is the position. So the SNPs are actually aligned to the genome to determine where they fall, and the consequences are actually determined from the position, comparing them to any transcripts and proteins uh, in the vicinity or in that sequence. And we calculate, for example, amino acid changes in the protein due to the different alleles. We do have some additional sources. Uh, for example, for human, we've got structural variation from DGVA, microarray data as well, human gene mutation database variations, and cosmic. So I'm going to show you these displays, but just so you have an overview, you can view variations on the sequence in several different views, including the gene tab sequence view, the transcript tab cDNA view, where you've got the amino acids highlighted in red, if there's another possible amino acid there at that position, and transcript exon view. Structural variation has its own page. If you go to a gene tab, and we will do this in demo one, you can actually see a list of the, for example, copy number variations in that region. So maybe you're not interested in the gene per se, but a whole region, and that's fine. We can go to the location tab. This specific page will show you structural variations, also small nucleotide polymorphisms if you want to look at those. And finally, just to mention, we do have a variant effect predictor. So if you do have coordinates on the genome and you have alleles, you can see one, if there's already a dbSNP identifier for that position, and also two, you can view the consequence on any transcripts and proteins in Ensemble. Just a couple more things. I wanted to mention we have phenotype associations for a gene. And a lot of these are through OMIM, Online Mendelian Inheritance in Man, so those are for human only. And you can also see some associations through variations. So you can also see this in the variation tab. Here we see phenotype associations for one variant, so in this case bipolar disorder, and that information is coming from both the EGA and the NHGRI GWAS catalog. Some more sources of phenotype associations with variations in genes are listed below. So our population frequencies are coming from HapMap, also 1,000 genomes, and also from the individual submitter for human. So how do I navigate the data? Let's get to the demos themselves. 
So for these demos, I'm going to be using the website. But keep in mind, you can get this data from the Ensemble database if you know some Perl using our API. And also Biomart, programmers and non-programmers alike can use Biomart to quickly get, for example, an Excel table of the data that you want. So you can find help and information um, on our tutorials page. You can email our help desk. We really welcome comments and questions, and we'll try to get back to you within 24 hours. We also have a beginner's course online if you want to have a go. And there's the Ensemble team as it is at the moment.